So, we're a little bit late, but we're fashionably late. We're talking about the menu today. Look who's here, Sean Arella and Matt. Hey guys. I'm Phil, by the way, and we are Boys on Film. Now, let's talk about the menu. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Menu. And can you talk about it? Is it something you can describe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Without spoilers. Yeah. This is, I've actually feel this is why I had a very personal, visceral reaction to this movie because I have in the past been labelled a foodie, <laughs> <laughs> which now is almost like a disgusting word. Okay. Were you anyway, triggered? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So it follows the story of um, a group of um, food lovers, critics, people with money, traveling to this island in Norway near Bergen to um, sample the delights of this really kind of fantastic gastronomic delight of this chef played by Joseph Fiennes. Ray Fiennes. Uh, Ray, Ray Fiennes. Same. Ray Fiennes. One of the Fiennes. He follows a story really about what happens when they all go to this island and their experiences with this world-class michelin star chef lots of things unroll and unpack as they arrive to enjoy these delightful wonderful dishes and i will leave the story there for now excellently summed up shall i just say first of all well maybe i should ask the question to both of you do you find ray fine scary define scary ominous menacing slightly creepy a kind of you're not sure what he's gonna do next i think Yes, because he's one of those actors who has kind of thinning hair and when he wets it back. Yeah. It's got that Hannibal Lecter, like, yes. super pale face, look back, receding hair. He looks like a serial killer. Totally. Basically. Yeah. And Sean, I was quite surprised when you told me you'd seen this. But then perhaps should we ask the question, is it really a horror film? Because I know it's a satire. Here we go. This is not a horror film. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> not at all? <laughs> not in the slightest. Of course, this is not a horror film. What are you talking about? I think it was advertised as one. At least in the trailers for America, it was it was placed as kind of a horror film. So I can see how people might take that away from just the trailer. But it's not. I, I agree it's not a horror movie. See, I think it's got horror themes. I think there's definitely horror in there. Yeah. Not the underlying storyline that was it <laughs> you're precious about your horror <laughs> well, it's not a bloody horror film that's why <laughs> anyway i to your question about the fines ray fines you know he was in james bond he was kind of menacing a bit in james bond he was kind of like authoritative in james bond he's a bit scary in this i guess but he's kind of giving off this presence of like he's got like ego hubris he's got gravitas because he's this like i'm this world-class chef and i know what i'm doing so he's yeah. giving off that vibe he knows what he's doing i mean when you think about the outcome of, <laughs> of the storyline he definitely yeah. knows what he's doing he's quite manipulative mm, that is true let's talk about the budget as well because i was quite surprised when i heard that this cost 30 million dollars to make because I think it's relatively, That's although crazy. it's well shot, I wouldn't have thought, apart from obviously the cast, because it's a great cast, and I would imagine quite an expensive cast, a few of them, um, I, I wouldn't have thought it would have cost that much to make, because it's kind of set all in the same room. And by that, I don't mean stagey. I don't think it looks stagey. Yeah. I hope they gave Hong Chao $29 million. <laughs> 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 she is amazing she's amazing incredible i was not a fan of the film i'll just say that from the from the get-go she's pearls i'm shocked that it costs that i know i'm shocked that it costs that much and i'm shocked <laughs> that it got the amount of praise the amount of praise that it did because i just i don't think it's a great film <laughs> There's like about 45 Did you like drag, queen, drag queen lines from Drag Race running through my head as Matt <laughs> says that. Okay, I'll let you have it, Matt. I think differently. I like the setup and the premise of it. I just don't think it was executed very well. I think it kind of lost the plot. 
And I don't really understand the, the impetus of people's behavior. I don't get what Ray finds behavior is and why all these people agree to his plan. I mean, can we talk about spoilers or am I not supposed to? I think we can. It's been out a while now, hasn't it? Okay, so we're going to do yeah. a, a spoiler I mean, warning. Here's, here's, where, here's where Phil puts a big banner across <laughs> all of our faces. Big alarm. <laughs> <laughs> the spoiler is he plans to kill everyone in the building, everyone in the restaurant, all the guests, all his staff who work. They're all going to commit suicide and kill all these people. But I don't really understand the major reason for doing that to these people. Oh, because I think the I one do. reason I don't fully get it is that there's too many characters. I think there's too many of the villain characters, all the people he gathered to the restaurant, that you never get a real connection with any of them or what their real crime is to this man. I don't really understand it fully. It just seems very, it seems satirical to the point of comedy in the extreme where it almost becomes slapstick. Yeah. Whereas if you compare it to something else like White Lotus or even Triangle of Sadness, which is up there with the kind of comedy satire element, they still did it a little bit better. And the menu is like the dumbed down version of that for me. Sean, I want your take in a second. I'm going to give you my take first of all, though, because I'm curious to see whether you would agree with what I'm saying in response to Matt's analysis of the menu. And mine is that I think Ray Fines, I think he's totally pissed off with the customers. And I think he's at the he's at the end of his tolerance levels. And I think he's just kind of flipped. He's gone the other way. Because I think I think he's put up with the cynicism and the characters like Anna Anya Taylor Joy, like her type, that are very cynical about the type of food that he's presenting and I think he just flips and I think that's the reason for his for his crimes. I don't know about that though. He planned on doing this before she wasn't even supposed to be there, right? So he planned on doing this with another person in her place. So it wasn't at the spur of the moment that she was cynical that he was pissed. I think he just hated these people and wanted to get revenge. Well that as and well. also yeah. did and clearly didn't want to do his job anymore. He's like, I'm just gonna blow everything up and just stop doing this and i'm gonna make all these people suffer because they're all pretentious assholes so i mean it's a stressful job right if you're a chef especially a celebrity chef that has his type of acclaim i think there's obviously a lot of pressure that comes with that so i think it's just been building a bit like a pressure cooker okay <laughs> the glasses come off <laughs> he means business <laughs> and the cat too <laughs> he's spoiling us I'm drawing everything around my own face. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So here we have the Fines, Ray Fines. He grew up in the service industry, starting his career in a burger joint where he loved doing what he was doing. He was a burger chef and he was lauded for it. He was like employee of the month, whatever, every month, forever. He then gets into fine dining. Um, and climbs a slippery pole of flat fine dining and that slippery pole strips away the pure joy of what he loved to do and what he is dictated by is other people so each of those tables in that restaurant represent a group that has slowly stripped away his soul and the reason why he's so angry is because he's saying you have taken away my one passion you Nicholas Hull or a dickhead who is like, I know every device, I know every way that you whip a custard to the point that you've stripped away the fun, you know. And then there is the food critic who is the lady that's in the Ozark who is like, I'm the critic and I can make or break you. And she also has a role in whether that happens. Then you've got all those really irritating um, uh, hedge fund guys guys who were like we pay for this so we can ask you for a cheeseburger because we pay for it yeah and entitled entitled twats entitled, yeah. going, i'm mate i'm that person i'm everywhere yeah. i'm gonna get my foot up with him i know i'm famous he's famous and collectively they have broken down ray fines to the point where he says i need to do something different that's that is the premise of why he's so angry the reason yeah. why anna taylor joy is the like turd in a fruit bowl for him is because 
She also works in the service industry. He's not pissed off with her. She works in the service industry. Yes, we know what, what service she works in. So he's like, you've upset the apple car. Because what I wanted was the real girlfriend of Nicholas Holt, who is also an irritating cow because she knows about every whisk and blender and whatever what was going on. Yeah, yeah. So in some ways, she throws it off. And where Anna Taylor-Joy is really f***ing clever is she taps back into the passion that Ray Fiennes has by going, make me a cheeseburger. Make me the thing that makes you happy. And that's how she escapes. That's how she gets away from it all because she tapped back in to his pure joy. The like Marie Kondo sparking joy with a cheeseburger. And isn't it funny because it's totally flipped as well. I mean, yes, applause, applause. Well done, Sean. I totally totally get that. Thank you for attending my TED Talk. (laughs) The culinary snobbery thing, the anti-capitalism thing as well. But I think it's so clever because it really does show you each type of person that enjoys that type of food and that type of restaurant experience. And there there is a lot of pretentious nurse about it as well and i think that's what the film understands i think the film I, I think the filmmakers totally get that i me yo i have in the past had a food blog i have in the past taken pictures of my food right i can look so, at nicholas Holt and relate and go god have i just been a massive twat that was you <laughs> you were nicholas Holt. <laughs> And I, that's partly why I really related to this movie because there's so much of it having taken photos of food, written about food, and been like, oh yeah, they use an Icelandic salt that I really can relate to. That I'm like, okay, I get it. And that's why this film landed for me. I have a, it personally resonates with me. Can I raise my hand now? I'm the Anya Taylor Joy in the story. I think it's bullshit and I think it's annoying and. I'm glad he's. I'm glad he's taking people down, but I wouldn't condone murdering everyone in the building. I almost wanted the movie to be less comedy and more da- like darker and darker, because it just ended up being ridiculous. Kind of by the end of it, when he made the um, s'mores finale. When we see the first death and it's outside the restaurant, I thought that was really good because there was there was a sense of frustration that you couldn't get to that person i'm guessing that's how they felt as well which i think came across really well because it did did make you feel quite tense but i i was kind of pleasantly surprised that they didn't go too graphic as well because i think they got the message across without being too violent do you find a reason or an explanation why the the uh people we haven't talked about yet his crew his chefs why they agreed to do all this and no one dissents and they're all like sure you can kill me you can <laughs> the money but they're being money. killed so where, where's the mo- where's the money going sean in the back sean hi <laughs> in the cheap seats so, <laughs> what's your name so each of those tables represents a reason that um chef slovic can't escape he cannot escape his fate because if he says, I'm going to close the restaurant down, the hedge fund guys go, no, I'm, no, I'm bankrolling it, so you can't do that. If he creates a shit meal, the food critic goes, he's ruined, he's over. If he, each of them represents a wall that he cannot get out of. So his only way out is the action that he takes. Point one. Mm-hmm. Now I bring the call <laughs> point two. The reason why his staff follow him is that they all aspire to be him. And what he's saying is, you're aspiring to this really awful outcome that I'm trapped in. So really, if you want to be a celebrity chef, we want to be a mixed fans star chef, you're going to end up where I'm at. So what's the, what can we do about it? What do we do? And they cult-like follow him to go, I get it. There's no way that I can be this kind of auteur this food like genius without these kind of idiotic characters that are sat in front of us so equally they buy into the outcome it's just like it's i mean the point is is a satire so it's not 100 percent realistic that every single person in this crew was like not one of them was like you know maybe i don't want to kill a bunch of people maybe i'll just run away right now but sean you said that you were Nicholas Holt's character. I mean, you have been, and you probably were elements of other people as well. 
there's the snobbery, isn't there? And you see other people in restaurants behaving like that. This is the thing. So what I there were moments. That, so let's okay. We we all agree it's not particularly realistic. Okay, we all get it, right? But there were it. hints of that though. Right, you can definitely but relate. What I love the things that really made me like lol, like <laughs> mega lol in this film was like the moment where he does that whole speech about the origins of bread and then goes, you're not getting any because you're all rich and then gives them like a row of dips, <laughs> gag it. And then Nicholas Holt going, but it's part of it. It's completely part of it. Yeah, this is the experience, right? Screaming, absolutely screaming. <laughs> and then like the moment where they all crowd around him and they make him cook a meal. Ray finds whispers into the air something like, you know, you are the worst. And it completely kills him because all he yeah. wants to be done is liked by the celebrity. There were moments that I just thought were genius. It's funny you referenced Triangle of Sadness, Matt, because I did think it had a similar vibe. Yeah. Triangle of Sadness. No, this is better than Triangle of Sadness, definitely. Mm, it doesn't I agree. peter out. I agree, actually. It, it holds its own right to the end, and I think it it delivers a great finale as well. It's more enjoyable because it's more popcorny. Maybe because it feels like it's an American movie. It feels very American to me, and Triangle of Sadness feels very non-American to me. Because it's actually not a horror. You know, it is. You get all that kind of spoofy satire, like it's gory but it's not really gory it's the and horror it's, of reality though even though it was far-fetched the horror of reality, you have to pay my client phil put that there on we the, go that. i'm owning that copyright <laughs> there's something about the fact that the gore and the graphicness forms part of the storyline like it's that's part of the plot line it's not just gore for gore's sake it's like well these things are happening because it forms part of the plot line so i i what do i know about horror nothing but i don't think this is horror did you like this more than White Lotus? Oh. I only compared them in that they're the idea of taking down these wealthy, I see. The anti-capitalist stuff, yeah. Kind of giving, them a, giving them a taste of their own medicine type thing. Yeah. I think White Lotus does a better job at it, which is yeah. a bit unfair because it's a TV series, not a film. So there's more time to get to know the characters. You don't really get to know any of the villains in the film because they're all they're all one-dimensional stock characters that's i think one of the main things i just didn't like about this is that they're all just cardboard characters so it, like this person's the food snob this person's the asshole critic this is the tech bro this is the, it's just like there's no depth so it doesn't matter that they all get off because they're all terrible but in a very paper thin way did you see comparison with succession with the menu because Mark Mylod's the executive director, executive producer and director of this, the menu. I can definitely see, see similarities there, which I guess is quite similar to yeah. White Lotus as well. Season one of White Lotus is all about money. Season two of White Lotus is all about sex. Yeah. So if I think about season one of White Lotus, yeah, the takedown is quite powerful. You know, you think about that like, rich guy who's like why is my, why have i not got the upgrade why is my room this this is what i paid for just you know breathing privilege yes there are parallels i guess with this film and the takedown is a different takedown but at the end the small guy wins um and i think that's where you have to perceive rafe finds which is yes he's this mega star but, but ultimately he is the one that's weirdly downtrodden in this in, by, in this environment that is the food world, yeah. which is he's held in the highest regard, but ultimately he's on the lowest rung because he's the one that is completely disempowered to do anything about his life to the extent that he has to do something drastic. And in some ways, he's the victim of his own success because of other people, not because of yeah. his own fault. Mm. And, that, and that principle applies to many things today. It applies to the art world, it applies to the music world. You can you can take the principle about it and look at globalization and capitalize, capitalism of many, many um, arts and traits and media, and you will get to a similar point, which is really who are mine, the story. There are people based, who are controlling everything. And I think that's an element that comes through there. It's been a big hit. $80 million it's made, and it costs $30 million. I think people do see <laughs> themselves and their friends and people they know in this. Um, my God, Sean's in it, for sure. <laughs> I've been that person, and I am embarrassed to say that. 
I give it a two. I didn't. I didn't totally hate it. There were good moments in it. There are good sharp things in it, but I give it a two. It's four for me. I loved it. I love the comedy. I love the darkness of it. I thought the performances were great. It, yeah, like Sean, it made me lol quite a few times. Sean, I am going to give it four stars. Wow. Ping! Look, Matt is entitled to his view, and I think it's a fair view. <laughs> yeah, we respect He's- that. It's Matt, you're never, you're never coming again. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here. You know, there's going to be people that listen and watch this um, channel and go, that Matt's right, and who are these two British stupid idiots? <laughs> and then others are going to say, who's this American guy? <laughs> who's this American guy? What's he talking about? Those two it's British smart guys in the glasses have really got him nailed. That's what's going to happen. That's the world, right? So, yeah. What are we going to say, Matt? <laughs> You can't cheat, Matt, by putting your glasses on now. <laughs> um, I can't see that close anyway. Uh, I like that there's two different opinions on this because I feel I feel like it's a film that's very can be very divisive. I don't think a Marmite movie. Love it, yeah, though. yeah, definitely. Do you have Marmite in the states? Yeah. <clears throat> Nobody know what it is. <clears throat> I've had it before. Are not you a, a Marmite fan. person or not? No. Thank you guys and thank you everybody for watching. If you've seen the menu, drop, drop a comment down below. <laughs> Gonna come out with all these sayings. Smash the subscribe button. Hit like, <laughs> all the rest of it. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Yeah.